What's up, everybody? It's your boy Barkley. In this episode, we finna be making some custom brush letter fonts for digital production. The process today is both analog and digital. The workflow is finna involve paint and brushes. We're gonna take some photos of them and then we finna bring them into Photoshop. We wanna work with white paper. When we take in the photograph, what we're really looking for is tonal differences and contrast. So when we bring them into Photoshop, they'll be like sushi grade and we can elevate them from there. They'll be perfect for elevation. What we going for is kind of like an organic brush font, something with lots of character, individualism and personality. These are design elements that I use in my personal digital production methods. What I want is a set of brush letter alphabets. There's an airplane flying above. There's an airplane. I'm gonna do multiple sets of alphabets because I want different options for each letter. The goal is to have each letter with a transparent background so I can float them on top of any imagery that I want. We finna lift the channels in Photoshop. The goal is to use alpha channels and transparency to lift each brush letter off the paper. I first had to learn this process when I was working in a design job. If you work in a design job right now, maybe you finna be asked to do this too. After I digitize all my alphabet sets, I want to be able to position them and manipulate them, each letter. This way I can spell and compose anything I want with them. I'm gonna be using these for my video display titles. And moving forward, I'm using them for my website and my portfolio. got the substrate that we're um, gonna be painting on. We're gonna be painting with some paintbrushes. Really, you could use anything that could act like a paintbrush. We'd be using some vessels for liquid. We're gonna use a dabbing surface for wiping off brushes and dabbing. We're gonna be using screen printing ink, but you could use anything that could act like paint. We're gonna dilute it with some water. Mop brush style going on and get that wild style. How we looking though? Uh, we got the Benny on Bennies though. What? I didn't even plan that. I woke up like this. Let's zip that back up. When you mix in this paint up, what you are looking for is the consistency of like melted ice cream. We got hella cars out here. When you're doing this process, we just looking for tonal differences and contrast. So you could do any color you want. I just be mixing this orange. It's two parts yellow and one part red. Not exact, but it's close every time. I've been mixing this paint for over 10 years. This specific paint, I've been mixing this specific paint for 10 years. And it's one of my favorite oranges right here. This is one of my favorite oranges. We got hella airplanes too, bro. Like what? All right, what I'm looking for is capital letters at rule of thirds on a letter size sheet of paper, horizontal, landscape. When you're a graphic designer, the main categories of fonts that you're concerned with are display, headline, subhead, body copy, and I call them bug type, you know, tiny little bugs. The classifications for your typefaces fall into whether or not they are serif, sans serif, black letter, things like that. Characteristics of typefaces would either be humanistic, mechanical, modern, or even uh, considering monospace. Each character in the font is the same width, monospace. They all take up one space. Computer fonts, typewriter fonts, stackable fonts, recipient fonts. When you're a graphic designer, you'd be learning the difference between a font and a typeface. If everybody know Helvetica, right? Everybody know what Helvetica is. Helvetica is a typeface. It's a family of fonts. Uh, what is a font though? Like a font is that individual alphabet set of that typeface at a certain size, at a certain point size. The Helvetica font would have to be a font size. So what typeface is this? It'd be like, that's Helvetica, bro. And they'd be like, but what font is this? It'd be like, that's Helvetica 12 point.
once you establish the size of the letter, then you start talking about the spacing between letters and the spacing between lines of letters. In multiple lines, whether it's a headline, subhead, or body copy, the actual space, the spacing out of the lines is called the letting. So if you wanna increase the letting, you'll get something that's like wide ruled. And if you wanna decrease the letting, then you'll get like college rule. If you want space between each individual letter in an entire line of letters, then you'd be talking about the tracking. Big tracking, or you want little tracking. That's how much space is in between all the letters in an entire line of letters. When we talk about kerning, the word kerning, kerning happens in between two individual letters. Some of the characters in a word need some extra adjustment. So you go in there in between two individual letters and be like, I need a little bit more space up in here. Or you'd be like, I need a little less space up in here. Then, you, then you're doing what's called kerning. That's just some graphic design vocabularies that nobody really care about though. Like, when I was working the job, I never really said those words. I just be like, there needs to be more spacing overall. And be like, these letters need more spacing between them. That's, that's what we do. We talk about lines of text then we talk talking about the actual grid and the body copy and when you start talking about the body copy and the grid then you'd be talking about columns if you have helvetica 12 point and you have a width of body copy whether it's one or two columns or three columns body copies should not be more than one and a half times the alphabet a through z of that font size everything is about font size everything is about proportion everything is about ratio it's all about balance when we talk about letter spacing, display type itself can be very little space between characters because the brain can kind of understand what's going on. But when you start talking about little letters, then you need to increase the space between each character because that's going to allow the human eyeball to be like, these are individual letters and I'm going I'm to read them. So that's what happens. Everybody. So we just finished up all the letter forms and we done did also some numbers, some numerics. We did some arrows too because I plan on the future being able to point at things with my titles. We're going to clean these up, put them up in the clear water, clean up the space, and then we're going to move forward. I got to let the letter forms dry real quick. And then the next thing we're going to do is take some pictures of them. We're going to use a cell phone. We're going to take some nice, even, flat, straight on photographs of them. We're looking for sushi grade so we can get them elevated graded when we get them inside the computer. Now that we just waiting for paint to dry, I'm finna make a beat for this episode. And when we return, we're gonna get back to the digital production portion. These are real right here. Get a little overexposed. Let's see what happens. These are them right here. Let's take a look. Pop up in there. Ooh. All right, let's do it up. You can use the phone. Now, what we got to do is get these photographs up into Photoshop. We compile them into a single document, turn them into black and white, so the computer can think of them as just tonal values. That's the point of this. For sure, we cropped them all, so just the area that we are working with. What we gotta do now is we gotta desaturate them, get them black and white. Now what we gotta do is we gotta compile them into one image but multiple layers each one of these sets gonna be on their own layer and then what we're gonna do is extract each letter form individually onto another layer their own individual layer so we're gonna have hella layers in this psd it's gonna be tight though we got them all compiled up in here so what we finna do now is we finna go through 
We finna go through each one. Whoa, where'd it go? Whoa, hey, bro. We're gonna go through each one and adjust the levels so white is white and gray is gray and we get the most out of its contrast. But also we're gonna try and maintain its transparent characteristics. And when we got the contrast leveled out correctly, then we finna start lifting the channels off. When we lift the channels, what's really happening is we're taking the information from the image that is governed by the contrast. So what we're going to be doing is everything that is a value that's not white is going to be lifted off of what is white. What we want is floating letters on top of the image because we're talking about contrast. And then if you hit it up with the image in the back. We can make it a color too, which is another color. Put that up in there. But what we want is actually each letter extracted from this now. The computer color space is RGB. It's red, green, and blue. That means each channel is a red channel or a green channel or a blue channel. And when you put all of those together in a screen, it creates white light. So if you took a, if you took a loop and threw it on the screen, you'd be able to see red dots, green dots, and blue dots. That's what you would see. did these letters up we took the channels up i was able to show all y'all how i be doing a lot of my own digital production analog and digital i hope y'all enjoy some of these studio views allow me to show y'all how i be doing some of my titles in my vlogs and also how i be doing titles for other print projects too that involve brush fonts if you want to know about other fonts i got some of those coming up too i got some calligraphy projects to come through and I got some other print projects to come through. So we're gonna see what happens. Y'all about to see these alphabets in upcoming episodes. You'll probably see it all throughout this episode. I'm gonna do my channel banner with these and then I'm gonna throw these up on my website so I can start doing some titles and I'll probably throw the PSD and maybe some transparent flattened out PNG versions for download. That way all y'all can play with these letter forms too. Website coming along, it ain't dropped yet, but it's finna drop. And when it drop, I'll let y'all know. All right, for sure, y'all, it's getting late. So I gotta clean up and I'm gonna get up out of here. And I'm gonna see y'all next time. Uh, and Bark Light. What shape is that? A triangle. Yeah, and what shape is that? A square. Yeah, and what shape is that? Yeah, high five, baby.